Well, hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Hey, you know what? Um, today is Thursday, February 27th. And I got a happy birthday shout out going out to Linda uh, Frauz, Frauz, Roger Brady, and Tracy Young. So, without further ado, here's a birthday song for the three of you. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm going to say. Hey, you know, you one more year older today. So, happy birthday to you, I say. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, you're one more year older today. So, happy birthday to you, I say. And many more. Cha 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 cha. All right, all right, all right. Also got some friend uh, Facebook friend anniversary. Shout out going out to Shola Dada. Shola Dada he used to make. He used to watch the show all the time, but then all of a sudden he disappeared. And well, he'll be back because well, it's changed names and nobody knows where to find. Hello and how are you? Because it is now the Shen Show. Speaking of it being the Shen Show. I have just found an archive of about 30 or 40 messages from people that had made posts or had made comments and stuff on YouTube, and I didn't know they existed. I had no idea. Um, It just accidentally popped up today in my uh, email that I had a... um, comment on YouTube, and I went to answer that one, and found 500 other ones, well, not 500 of them, but probably 30 or 40, and it was like open, opening up a time warp box, because some of them were five years old, that I hadn't answered in five years, uh, I ran across a friend of mine from, uh, uh, used to live right next door to me, Jerry Peppers, um, he was... Uh, kind of jumped right in there. I had no idea. I mean, all of a sudden, boom. That was, what, a two year, three years ago, I guess, that that one was posted. And I, he says, he said, after all these years, I finally find you right out here on YouTube. And I should have w- wished I'd have known that they were there or available to get to, um, cause I would have sure said something to him back then, you know. I haven't heard from him since. I don't know if he's even still around. I really hope he is. Um, His uh, little um, half-brothers and stuff are here uh, with me. Um, They watch the show, Rick and Alan and and, uh, their sister, Patty, um, which is his real sister. So they watch the show, too. So anyway... um, and uh not to mention uh Pete and uh um Martin they're on they come in all uh they hit the like button all the time uh Tracy uh don't forget Tracy and uh John Mary and uh there's quite a few people out there that are hitting that like button these days and I really appreciate it Amy don't forget Amy uh and this just the the list goes on and on, and I appreciate everybody that watches. I really do. I I didn't know that that existed. It really threw me for a loop. And everybody was saying how my songs and that rock and keep up the good work and all that cool stuff. And I wish I wished I'd have known that a long time ago because you know if you don't get the if you don't get the comments that you want to hear then it pretty much might put you in a state of depression where whenever you're all depressed, you can't function in life and your life becomes miserable. But that's not with me. I don't I don't ever get depressed. I, I found that uh, depression is a, what shall we call it, a waste of time. Uh, it gets you to thinking about things that, um, what's going to happen after you're at the end of your depression um, all you can either do is give up or or get up. And, well, I choose to get up. So I waste no time with the depression stage because, well, I'm going to get up anyway. At the end of it, I'm going to get up anyway. I'm not giving up. I'm going to get up. So 
there ain't no need to be depressed. Yeah, got it. I, I try to instill that philosophy. It's just philosophy. Or one can be Akuma Matata. Uh, anyway, uh, I like to instill that philosophy on uh, lots of folks, you know. Anyway, uh, now that I've gotten all that uh, talk about all them messages and everything taken care of, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all those com comments and everything. Uh, looks like it's time for me to do the weather. And the weather, you know what? The weather says that it's, uh, well, what is it? 45 degrees out there right now. And the sun is halfway shining. Um, it's not completely cloudy, so it's mo mostly cloudy. I mean, it is overcast, but it's not so overcast that it's dark out there. Let's put it that way. It's uh, not dark. It's just kind of kind of overcast. My uh, uh, nighttime caregiver roommate went out and got herself a uh, tech visor. Um, she wanted to get some tech glasses, but she couldn't find them. So she got a tech visor at the store, and hopefully that'll do the job for her. Um, I would hope so. Anyway, let's see. Today, Tuesday, cloudy skies, highs near 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, uh, some passing clouds, lows around 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds are going to be light and variable. Friday, February 28th, is going to be mostly cloudy skies, a few of flurries or snow showers possible. Highs around 46 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds are going to be west to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. With the 46 degrees, uh, how much how much snow flurry do you think you're going to get? Since how it's not even frozen, they can't hardly make it to the ground. They'll be making it to the ground as rain. Anyway, some clouds early will give away to generally clear conditions overnight. All lows near 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be north to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then sunny skies. That's right. Sunny skies are going to shine all the time. Here we are to say celebrate. Not on Sesame Street. I don't live on Sesame Street. Anyway, sunny skies. Highs around 56 degrees. Yep, that's Saturday. What a day. Saturday, February 29th. Beautiful day. That's good for me because I like beautiful days. Sunny day. Highs around 56 degrees. Winds are going to be south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So... A few clouds overnight, uh, 44 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds are going to be south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then how about Sunday, March the 1st, cloudy and highs around 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be south to southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Showers and thunderstorms in the evening, then mainly cloudy overnight. With light rain possible, lows around 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 60%. And then for Monday, March the 2nd, rain showers in the morning with numerous thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. Highs around 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 80%. Overcast with rain showers at night, uh, overnight. Lows around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds are going to be light and variable. Chances of rain, 70%. Light and variable means uh, not above 5 miles per hour. Apparently, that's what it means. Let's see. I, 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 ah, ha, 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 ha. I had been whistling tunes all morning, and I don't know if my whistler is done shot or not.
Or, uh, let's see. Or,
No, it's Lone Black Train. Sorry. For those of you who did not know those, there was Shenandoah, there was uh, um, uh, Rosita's Cantina, there was uh, um, uh, 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 Sunshine on My Shoulders, there was uh, The Long Black Train. Uh, let's see, what else did I do in there? There was a few others that I'd done. I don't remember what all I'd done. How about something like this? All right, anyway, enough of that whistling stuff. A whistling songs, whistling songs. I don't know, my whistler may not be all that good. Uh, you never can tell. Whistler's whistler, whistler's mother. I'm the whistler's, I've got the whistler's mother on the line. Whistler's mother was on the line. She said whistling was fine. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I keep, you hear that click noise? I keep opening my door over there because I hear horns honking. Well, the first horn I heard honk, well, they must have went to somebody else's house to deliver something. And then secondly, I thought that I heard them coming up to the door. Well, no, that wasn't them coming up to the door. That was a trash truck out there doing the trash stuff. And they're beating trash cans all over the place. Making all kinds of noise. Hope they're not destroying them. I mean, it just sounds horrible out there, the things they're doing. Uh, things that they are doing keep looking down here at my chest because i've got this medicine bottle around my neck and well that's my three o'clock meds and i don't want them to be three o'clock lap meds because well they're not easy to take from the lap because well like i said i've got no grip and with no grip i can't pick them up they're just stuck there so i've been occasionally looking to see if they're still in the bottle of which they are so you don't have to worry about that I'm all medication. I've got my medications on me. Oh, but I am doing that dysreflexia thing. Hey, 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 hey. That's because i got a wrinkle under my buttocks. There's a wrinkle under my hind hind, hind side. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. It's not bad enough to make me start sweating and getting up and getting angry and anything like that. It's not, it's not, um, 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 um catchy anyway what was i gonna do i am gonna sing a song i want to sing a song i don't know what song oh i do know what song no i don't know what song it was puff the magic dragon i can do that but that's not the song i was going to do i could whistle it how about if i just sing it song lyrics puff the magic dragon oh by the way um I forgot to mention Ashley and uh, Oliver. Oliver, Oliver, Oliver. Hey, Oliver. Hey, Oliver. Oliver. Hey, I'm going to sing this song for you, okay? All right. Here you go. This one's for you. Hey, Oliver. Oliver. Ol Ol <laughs> what are you doing? Where are you going? Oliver. 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 Okay, here we go. Puff the magic dragon, lived by the sea, and frolicked in the autumn mist, in a land called Honolulu. Well, little Jackie Paper, he loved that rascal puff, 
and brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. Poor Puff, the magic dragon, lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Yes, Puff, the magic dragon, he lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Well, together they would travel on a boat with billowed sails. Jackie kept a lookout perched on Puff's gigantic tail. Well, noble kings and princes would bow when near they came. Pirate ships would lower their flags when Puff roared out his name. Oh, Puff, the magic dragon, lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hunley. Yes, Puff, the magic dragon, he lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Well, dragons live forever, but not so little boys. Painted wings and giant rings make way for other toys. One gray night it happened, Jackie Paper came no more, and Puff, that mighty dragon, he ceased his fearless roar. Oh, his head was bent in sorrow, green scales, they fell like rain. Puff no longer went to play along the cherry lane. Without his lifelong friend, Puff could not be brave. So Puff, that mighty dragon, slipped into his cave. Oh, Puff, the magic dragon, lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Yes, Puff the magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Oh, that's a sad, sad story. I forgot how it ends. Oh, but most these nursery rhyme type songs, they're horrible and they begin. Well, how about some nursery rhymes? They're not so cool and kind. They're always horrible endings, like the ones you sing online. How about the little songs that you sing to your kids? The little songs like, uh, Rockabye Baby. How about that there? A Rockabye Baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bough breaks, which is a tree limb, of course, breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come, baby, slamming to the ground, crashing in the fall. I mean, come on now. What's up with that? Slam your baby down on the ground. This is not good. Down will come, baby, cradle and all. Oh, like he's going to float down out of the sky, soft and, and cushy. No, he's way up in the treetops. The tree's going to break. Baby's going to fall, smash. Smash down on the ground. Pull, pull, baby. Hit the ground. Little Miss Muffet and her magic tuffet. She sat on a, she sat on a tuffet eating her turds and whey. That there's a cottage cheese for you and me. Eating her curds and whey and well... Down came this spider, you know, and he sat down beside her, and he scared Miss Muffet away. She just ran off, you know, left her curds and whey right there on the spot. She's got now, now we understand why kids is afraid of spiders. They learned it. It's learned behavior from uh, little Miss Muffet. And then, then there's the, let, let's see, let's, let's just check this out. Uh... Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes. There's Humpty Dumpty. There you go. 
Humpty Dumpty uh, sat on the wall. And Humpty Dumpty, he had a great fall. Well, all the king's horses and all the king's men, they couldn't uh, put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So he fell into a bunch of pieces, this poor old Humpty Dumpty. And and that's what happened to him. He fell off the wall and he broke into pieces. And poor old guy is gone. That's the end of, that's the end of old Humpty Dumpty. And then there's these three blind mice. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. They all, they all come after the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life as three blind mice? They lost their tails. Blind. First off, they're blind. And then they had no idea they was bumping into this this butcher lady, this horrible uh, person, the farmer's wife, and it scared her, and she cut off all their tails. Now they're blind, and they have no tail. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, well, how does your garden grow? With cockle shells and this and that, and and it makes my uh, onions smell. I don't know. There's little Miss Muffet. Jack and Jill, there you go. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Well, Jack fell down, and he broke his crown. And Jill, well, she come tumbling after. So there you go. They fell off the hill. They went up there to get some water, and and then down they fall. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for my master, and one for uh, the somebody, and then one for the little boy down the lane. So I got all these bags of wool, but now you made me give it up. It's all gone. My wool that I grew all this all this uh, winter, I've been growing this wool. Three bags of it, you know. And now you're making me give it away. It's all gone. Uh, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. This lady, she had so many children, she didn't know what to do. What's that? What's everybody want? What does everybody want? Life, life to bad stories and stuff about life. She's got so many children, she didn't know what to do, the poor little lady who lived in the shoe. I tell you, these, these nursery rhymes, they're just scary stuff out there. They're, and they're engraving our children's brains with horribleness and, and methodical junk. Okay, I guess I'll get off my nursery rhyme kick. Um, here's eight Mother Goose nursery rhymes. Um... Ain't Mother Goose, we we don't we don't mean to mom shame Mother Goose, but here's a closer look at what your favorite tales are really about. There you go. Who even was mother of all rhymes anyway? Actually, I think it was the Brothers Grimm who started out with all this stuff. But anyway, Humpty Dumpty. Um. See, I already went all over this. Somebody has went and pointed this out. We start, a trio of visually impaired rodents are attacked by a farmer's woman with a uh, ginormous knife. And did you ever see such a sight in your life? Thankfully, no. And if this And if this is bad enough, the real story behind it involved Queen Mary and her deadly temper when... People tried to overthrow her. Okay, well, there you go. See, that's some stuff like that right there. These are background stories on where Mother Goose came up with these stories. Huh, I'll be doggone. Didn't even know it. It's like Humpty Dumpty Dump. The rest of that stuff I made up. This is stuff somebody's put on the Internet. Uh, set the, the, the So child friendlies or 21st century appropriate after all huh here's how eight of mother goose's most famous rhymes appear to modern eyes um okay he's an adorable egg that dies think about it he's just sitting there and splat he's on the ground and his friends can't help him don't fall off a wall kids or you're on your own. In reality, this rhyme is believed to be about a cannon that protected a medieval fort legend uh, and has it that uh, during a siege, the cannon was knocked off of a wall. Soldiers rushed to lift it back up, and as they did, the enemy started picking them off right, left and right. So 
you can be the judge which version to tell. Then the blind might swear or uh, Queen Mary, and then what was next? Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Why? Why was Mary so con contrary? Oh, because those pretty maids all in a row are dead and buried. It's uh, widely believed that this rhyme is also about Mary uh, the first of England, a.k.a. Bloody Mary, whose reputation was based solely on the fact that she carried out mass executions of her uh, dissenters, apparently. Dissenters, whatever dissenters, silver bells and cockle shells aren't gardening tools or or pretty flowers. They are torture devices. Heartwarming, you know. And how about Miss Muffet? Miss Muffet binds, minds her own business, sees a spider, and chaos ensues. The moral of this story is either arachnophobia is understandable or look for any excuse not to eat um, not to eat uh, 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 cottage cheese. Okay, and then Jack and Jill. Hey, they picked the same ones I did. That's weird that they picked the same ones I did. Huh. Mm, here you have two kids trying to be helpful by fetching a pail of water. But look, where where does it get them? Jack ends up with a broken crown. Probably Mother Goose for... Uh, a uh, traumatic brain injury, and nobody seems to care, in fact, that sh they send him to bed with his uh, concussion, with his concussioned head, which is a ma major no-no. And while Jill, the one who gets in trouble, isn't, it isn't her fault at all. Jack get, can't get down a hill without falling. <laughs> And then sing a song of sixpence. I don't really remember that one. But uh, I did do blah, blah, black sheep. Okay, at least a mother goose rhyme that doesn't involve Queen Mary. I or her immediate family. Oh, Queen Mary the first or her immediate family. At first glance, it seems like a sweet little story about a darling sheep that produces an impressive amount of wool. Three bags full, folks. Three bags. Then you find out that the rhyme is actually thought to be a protest against an especially harsh wool tax imposed on poor farmers in the 13th century. That little boy who cried, who cries down the lane. Yeah, that's the farmer sad. And then there was an old woman who lived in the shoe. Okay, here we go again. We've all heard the tiny house movement. Well, by, but living in a shoe is talking, taking it too far. And just how did the old woman come to have so many children at her adva advanced age? Was this some sort of medieval orphanage? Uh, get her some care, uh, dot com. <laughs> but seriously, this is a terrible rhyme. It just, it's just four lines, features poverty, famine, and child abuse. Get this lady some help. All right, and uh, so who was Mother Goose? Maybe you imagine a female goose with a bonnet and a quill pen, scribbling bits of rhymes on scrap paper. Or maybe uh, you envision a little old woman with a shawl and a cane and a dozen of children clamoring for the next bit of <laughs> rhythmic bliss to pour from her lips. In either case, you'd be wrong. The identity of the real Mother Goose isn't conclusive, conclusively known. Legends, memories, and stories over the centuries have failed to produce a real Mother Goose. What we do know is that the popular bedtime stories, the rhymes, have existed in various forms for centuries, and the first book of Mother Goose rhymes was published in 1697. Okay, there you go. There you go. There's some other goose stuff. I didn't know that that was going to come up like that after I started talking about it, but there it was. Boo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. All right.
what how much time have I put into this? Wow, thirty five minutes again already? Well okay, looks like it's about time for our portion of the problem pro problem program called Our Daily Bread. And so if you tune into uh, odb.org and support them, give them a little support and a little financial funding, they can pass the word of the gospel all around the world. That's right in their little booklet called Our Daily Bread. Anyway, um, I go through my church to get mine, so I'm going on that route. Of course, I haven't really been to church that much lately. I did make it uh, two weeks ago. I can only go every other weekend, and only if the uh, weather is good and my uh, range of motion falls on the right day. And anyway, and if I'm able to do that. Anyway, uh, unexpected change. That's right. Today's devotion is called unexpected change. If you're planning on tuning into uh, the Bible with Briscoe today, the uh, we'll be covering Numbers 17 through 19 and Mark 6:30 through 56. Okay. Today's devotion uh, is unexpected change, and the um, scripture that goes with that is James 14, 13 through 17, which I'll be reading now. Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? Why, uh, you are a midst that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant sh schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and, does it, do, and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Okay, James 4, 13 through 17. And there you have it. Let there be the Bible uh, portion of the program, the Daily Bread. And so therefore, I've got one other song for you today. And that would be, Well, I'll go by, my friends, it's a time to go. Blah, 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 blah. I say goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. Oh, I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. This here has been Shinado Briscoe saying hello and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shin Show. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here. And I hope that you are too.